Welcome to the Village of Mount Prospect's virtual presentation for the Mellis Park to Meadows Park pedestrian bridge project. My name is Sean Dorsey and I am Director of Public Works for the Village of Mount Prospect. We are excited to share updates on the pedestrian bridge connection between Mellis Park and Meadows Park. This project will help improve bicycle and pedestrian access for the entire community. In addition to the information provided during this presentation, we encourage you to provide feedback via the online survey on the project website. I will now turn the presentation over to Katie Leska, our consulting partner from Burns and McDonald. Katie. Thank you, Sean. As Sean mentioned, my name is Katie Leska with Burns and McDonnell, and I'll be walking you through the remainder of this presentation. Today, we will provide an overview of the project location, the project's purpose and need, and alternatives that have been developed to date. We will then look at the recommended alternative before reviewing information on park connections, including initial renderings of the bridge. We will finish the presentation with next steps, including the upcoming schedule and opportunities to share feedback. The project is located between Mellis Park and Meadows Park in the village of Mount Prospect at the border with the village of Arlington Heights. Mellis Park to the south is co-owned by the Mount Prospect Park District and the Arlington Heights Park District. It features a visual art center, soccer fields, baseball and softball diamonds, and walking paths. North of Northwest Highway, Meadows Park is owned by the Mount Prospect Park District and includes an aquatic center, playground, and baseball and softball diamonds. The two existing parks are separated by three railroad tracks owned by the Union Pacific Railroad and four lanes of traffic along Northwest Highway. There are multiple factors which have sparked the study of a new crossing point at this location. The purpose of this project is to promote neighborhood connectivity and active transportation options for those looking to get between the north and south sides of the village. The proposed location was selected due to its proximity to existing paths, sidewalks, and routes, providing links to surrounding schools, residential neighborhoods, commercial developments, and public transportation. It will provide safe and convenient access for bikes and pedestrians across, north, across Northwest Highway and the railroad tracks where people are currently crossing unprotected. More to come on that later in this presentation. And it will promote multimodal transportation options, expand the bicycle network, and will be fully ADA compliant, providing access for the disabled community. This map shows the various existing bike paths, train stations, pace routes, schools, and other community amenities. The large red star in the center of your screen represents the project location. The yellow lines show existing bike accommodations. There is only one crossing point from the south side of the village to the north at Emerson Street. There are connections running to both Mellis Park and Meadows Park, so an additional crossing point near the western limits of the village will open many more opportunities for active transportation throughout all of Mount Prospect and Arlington Heights. There are also several other planned bike facilities that can be seen in various colors and dashed lines. The red dashed line that is running vertically in the middle of the map is the proposed bike path along Bussey Road, whose construction is included in the Cook County multi-year plan. The project will tie in near Mellis Park, whose existing path can also be seen in yellow. The new crossing will connect both these paths to the north side of Northwest Highway and the proposed Northwest Bikeway, which is a priority corridor in the Northwest Municipal Conference Bicycle Plan. Also shown on this map and within the region is the proposed Evanston Elgin Bikeway in light blue near the bottom of the map, which when completed will allow cyclists to travel from the Fox River Trail to Lake Michigan and connect 13 municipalities. The green and pink lines are existing transit facilities in the area. The pink line running diagonally along Northwest Highway is along the UP railroad tracks and serves the Metro Union Pacific Northwest line. The green lines are existing PACE bus routes. Additionally, there are multiple other facilities highlighted in purple in the area that would benefit from a safe access point within the two mile existing stretch without a crossing, such as Randhurst Village and the Kensington Professional Center. Existing schools can be seen in blue and range from elementary through high school. As you can see, the Red Star is a good central location which will help to provide a convenient crossing for all these facilities without needing to travel north, um, north of a mile out of direction to access the other side of Northwest Highway and the railroad tracks. With many people utilizing this location to cross in an unsafe condition, there is clearly a desire for access at this point. There are currently two miles between the nearest crossings. To get across a railroad anywhere near the vicinity of the parks requires a significant amount of out-of-direction travel, 
which either deters per people from walking or biking or leads to unsafe behavior. As described previously, the two parks have complementary features, so the new bridge will essentially expand these facilities. The village also hosts events at these parks. A convenient connection will provide additional transportation methods as well as access to parking at both locations. A crash analysis was performed as part of this study. The analysis focused on the area between the closest crossings of the railroad and Northwest Highway on either side of the project location. Kensington Road to the west and Central Road to the east. The crash reports for the most recent five years were gathered for this section. For the purposes of this study, only crashes involving bicycle and pedestrians were included. While this only included three crashes, it is noteworthy that each of those included an injury. There was a rear end crash report that specifically called out a pedestrian crossing Northwest Highway in this location. A car needed to stop suddenly to avoid hitting the pedestrian, causing the car behind to rear end them. There is no warning for drivers on Northwest Highway of crossing movements at this location, putting drivers and those crossing the street at risk. To consolidate the previous information in our purpose and needs statement, the purpose of this project is to provide a safe and convenient crossing for pedestrians and bicycles to travel between the north and south side of the village of Mount Prospect. The only existing access points across the railroad tracks and roadway are located two miles apart. The safety concerns relative to crossing at this unprotected location and the des desire for enhanced regional connectivity demonstrate the need for a safe crossing. The alternative development phase of this project looked at five different structure types at this location to determine the most appropriate option given the context of the area. The criteria that we looked at were the impacts to existing facilities that we are trying to cross, so in this case the Union Pacific Railroad and the Illinois Department of Transportation, the ability to connect to the parks and how that access would be provided, the cost of the structure, utility concerns, the long-term maintenance of the structures, and finally, the aesthetics of the structure. The first structure we will walk through is a two-span steel girder bridge. The pier that can be seen here located between the railroad and Northwest Highway is required for all two-span structures. There are several benefits of the steel girder bridge shown. The structure itself is the least costly in terms of construction cost, it provides the opportunity to lower the profile over Northwest Highway because the vertical clearance requirements over the roadway are less than what is required over the railroad. This allows for shorter ramps at the Meadows Park connection. And this and all the structures that we will walk through provide the opportunity for foundation types, which will reduce the amount of excavation that is required. Our analysis of structure type one found several concerns though. The pier located in the UP right away will require lengthy and costly coordination with the railroad. It is also not the most aesthetically pleasing option, so some sort of facade will be needed to give it a signature bridge look. Long ramps will be needed at Mellis Park, which is something that will be required for all options and is driven by the clearance requirements over the railroad. There are also aerial power lines along the north side of Northwest Highway, which will require relocation. In the long term, the bridge will require regular painting and inspection. And finally, with the permanent structure between the rail and the roadway, there are potential impacts to both of their traffic during construction. Structure type two is also a two span structure with the permanent pier located within the Union Pacific Railroad right away. However, this option is a truss bridge, which is more aesthetically pleasing and wouldn't require a facade to be constructed as part of a signature bridge structure. A height of roughly 10 feet is assumed for the truss. Similar concerns with the coordination time and cost as well as potential impacts during construction apply to this option, making it less desirable than some other bridge types that we will assess. Additionally, a truss bridge does not provide the opportunity to lower the profile over Northwest Highway, so long ramps will be, re will be required at both Mellas and Meadows Park. Structure type three is a single span truss bridge. A single span structure is the ideal situation for this location. Removing all permanent features within Union Pacific right away and IDOT right away significantly reduces the amount of coordination required with both entities. It also eliminates the need to purchase additional right away. This saves a significant amount of both time and money. 
A truss structure can also serve as a gateway structure without the need for additional aesthetic treatments. The assumed height here is about 18 feet. Since over 23 feet is required for clearance to the railroad, we do not want to have a structure height that is much more than this so it has not become too imposing. The concerns with structure type 3 are identical to those that are required for any overpass in this location. The length of the ramps in order to provide adequate clearance over the railroad, relocation of the aerial lines, long-term maintenance concerns, and ensuring that we do not disrupt traffic during construction still apply to structure type 3. Similar to structures type 2 and 3, structure type 4 is a prefabricated tied arch bridge. The benefits and concerns are the same as structure type 3 since it is a single span structure. Several additional concerns include that our initial estimate for the height of the arch is around 23 and a half feet, which puts the top of the structure about 50 feet in the air. And structure type 4 is also the most costly solution. An underpass was the final structure type that was evaluated. It consists of an 18 foot wide section under the railroad and roadway. The benefits include that only 12 feet of vertical clearance is required for an underpass compared to the 23 and a half feet needed for a structure over the railroad, resulting in shorter approach ramps at the parks. Structure type 5 reduces the visual impacts associated with the bridge options, and it also might be possible to avoid relocating the overhead power lines along Northwest Highway and would reduce the maintenance costs such as consistent bridge painting. Numerous factors complicate the potential to utilize an underpass at this location. Construction will be difficult due to the need to avoid impacts to railroad operations throughout requiring multiple stages and a maintenance of traffic plan will also be needed for Northwest Highway. The depressed approaches will require a larger footprint and permanent right-of-way. There are safety concerns related to a long confined area, lighting will be required, and there are potential underground utility impacts. The largest hurdle for the underpass is that the Union Pacific Railroad does not like underpass structures presenting a significant roadblock as our approval will be required for any improvements. Crossing under both the railroad and Northwest Highway will require significant coordination with both the UP and IDOT. Each of the alternatives evaluated will provide a suitable crossing to allow pedestrian and bicycle access across Northwest Highway and the Union Pacific Railroad tracks. The purpose of this project and the alternative evaluation process helps determine the most appropriate solution for this unique location. The results of our analysis and coordination found the single span steel truss bridge to be the ideal crossing. A single span option is preferred to minimize construction within IDOT and UP right away, which eliminated the first two structures. The underpass presents several challenges as we discussed on the previous slide, the biggest of which was the opposition from the railroad, which will be required to review and approve the improvements that cross their facility. Of the remaining two options, structure type 3 has a more reasonable structure height and is also less costly than the tight arc structure, while still being aesthetically pleasing, making it our recommended alternative. Now that we have a structure type selected, we looked at the best ways for people to access both Meadows Park and Mellis Park from the new over overpass. The pathway needed to be fully ADA accessible. In order to effectively address the purpose and need of the project, it is essential that this bridge will enhance neighborhood connectivity for everyone. Another important criteria for the length of these connections was the vertical clearance over the railroad. As previously mentioned, ramps needed to be fairly long in order to get down to ground level without exceeding the maximum grade for ADA compliance. To determine these ramp locations, we worked with both park districts as well as MWRD, who owns a large detention pond within Mellis Park, to ensure the project will improve the existing facilities. You can see the proposed path here in Mellis Park. In this rendering, we'll cross over the existing bike path and tie in within Village right away in order to provide enough length to be ADA compliant and cross over the railroad. The design was developed to avoid running along the backyards of the existing homes along Mellis Park to avoid additional visual impacts. And in addition to the ramp that you can see here, stairs will also be provided at the end of the bridge for those who are looking for quicker access across the bridge. The connection to Meadows Park was developed with input from the park district to avoid impacts to the baseball diamond. You can see that the ramp will loop under itself in order to stay at least 250 feet from home plate and avoid additional impacts to the park. The purpose is to enhance the parks, 
so it was important to us to find a solution that did not impact the existing facilities. Stairs are once again provided as well as a sidewalk connection from Meadows Park parking lot to the sidewalk along Northwest Highway on the north side of Northwest Highway. In this rendering, you can see an aerial view over the railroad tracks and the roadway, as well as the connections to both Meadows Park and Mellows Park. If you have questions or comments, please complete the online survey on the project webpage. The comment period for the project will remain open from July 14th to August 13th, 2021. Looking ahead, Phase 1 preliminary engineering approval is anticipated in fall of 2021. From there, Phase 2 design engineering is expected to begin in 2022, dependent on available funding. Construction for the project is tentatively scheduled for 2023 or 2024. Thank you for joining us.